The magic number for the Mariners to clinch the AL West is 32. You are a Locked On Diamondbacks, your daily Arizona Diamondbacks podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every week, this is the podcast we talk about all of Major League Baseball. I bring in my fellow guests. Hey, once a week, I bring in as a special guest star sitting right over there is Miller Thomas host of the Locked on Diamondbacks podcast. You can follow me on all your podcasting platforms. Hit subscribe on Locked on Diamondbacks. And also please hit me with a little follow button on Twitter at careertimes24 for the personal account or look up Locked on Diamondbacks both Twitter and Instagram for the podcast handle. I'm your pal Slime at Slide Baseball on Twitter, Slide Baseball Podcast Instagram. And please subscribe. Please hit the like button. And uh, also when you send out the trivia question answers, post it here on YouTube or on Twitter or again, I, I'm not good at branding. I don't know what it's called. Hey, uh, the last one, the last trivia question we got, a couple of people uh, answered it uh, pretty specifically. Uh, Amy Green, AJG1423, answered it correctly. The question was the Yankees have won 27 World Series titles, all but two of them were won with a pitcher getting the final out. One of them ended a, on a wild pitch with a runner scored on a wild pitch, but only one out of the 27 Yankee World Series titles was won with a walk-off hit. What Yankee legend, whose number is retired in Monument Park, is the only person to hit a walk-off hit to clinch the World Series for the Yankees? Do you know who it is, Millard? Which nope. Yankee legend? Throw Alex a Yankee Rodriguez. legend out. A-Rod. Yeah, Alex Rodriguez's number is the only one not in Monument uh, Park right now. Uh, the answer is Billy Martin. Billy Martin ended the 1953 World Series with a base hit up the middle and later went on to manage the Yankees to back-to-back pennants in 1976 and winning it all as the manager in 1977. Came back and forth, was hired for the 79 season, fired, hired for the 83 season, was promoted to the vice president. Uh, Then they fired Yogi Berry. He was brought back. And then they sent Billy to the broadcast booth. They brought him back as a manager for 88, fired him. And he was on the verge of coming back to manage the 1990 Yankees when he died in a car crash on Mm. Christmas Eve. So there you go. It was a New Year's Eve. It was some Eve. But Billy Martin is the answer to that, a man who is a never-ending source of fascination of mine. I've only read three biographies of him. All right, uh, but he briefly, actually, no, not briefly, a couple of times, he managed the AL West champions. He managed the Minnesota Twins to the ALCS in 1969. He managed the Oakland A's to the ALCS in 1981. Billy bounced around a lot. But the AL West is what we're talking about a little bit right now. Um, Man, it doesn't get any tighter than it is. And three thrilling games took place. Uh, Teoscar Hernandez and Julio Rodriguez each homered. And even though the Royals got a two-run home run, who the hell hit the two-run home run? Um, Velasquez of Kansas City hit a two-run home run to make it three to two. In the end, Luis Castillo did get the win. The Seattle Mariners got the win themselves. The Houston Astros, who earlier in this weekend had a no-hitter going in through seven, the bullpen blew the no-hitter, the shutout, and eventually the win. I think the Astros have dusted themselves off as they won 17-4. to four in Detroit today. There was a very nice moment as Justin Verlander gave a little hat tip to Miguel Cabrera as the two future Hall of Famers were teammates for many, many years in Detroit, including two trips to the World Series, 2006 and 2012. Both of them are going to the Hall of Fame. Both of them have won the MVP as members of the Tigers. And it was a nice moment and Verlander wound up uh, getting the victory there with that the i don't know if you saw what happened between the minnesota twins and the texas rangers but holy weirdness was that a strange game 
the Rangers had a pretty big lead going late in the game. And then there was a grand slam by who? So who hit it on? It was a uh, Royce Lewis hit a grand slam for Minnesota. A Roldis Chapman came in to close out the game in the ninth and he did what he does best, which is he blew the save. And the game went into, despite having the ghost runner went into the 12th inning Rangers took the lead twins tied it up. And then in the 13th inning, Oh man, the Rangers were all out of pitchers basically. And some, they brought in some poor schmuck and I'm sorry, Brad Patrick, but I am unfamiliar with the resume of Jonathan Hernandez, but uh, he could not throw a strike and he lost the game in the stupidest way possible, which is a bases loaded walk. At that point, just lob it down the heart of the plate. Two outs, bases loaded walk, lob it down the heart of the plate because if he hits a grand slam, you tip your hat. But you've got, if you don't throw a strike, the game's over. And that's what happened. And if the Rangers lose the division by one game, remember this game. But with that, the Mariners, who are not even the third wild card team on the 17th of August, on the 27th of August, are in first place by themselves. Who would have thought it? Well, you, Sully Baseball, because you predicted not too long ago that maybe the Mariners were going to get hot and take this division, and now it's in play for the Mariners to win the AL West. And if you want to pick an MVP during this hot stretch, because if you look at the Mariners' last 10 games, they're 9-1. and If you need to pick an MVP for the month of August for the Mariners, it's clearly the reigning AL Rookie of the Year, Julio oh, yeah. Rodriguez, who is batting yeah. over 400 in the month of August with over 1,100 OPS. And now if you look at his slash line, because if you remember at the All-Star break, we were like, Julio's having like an all right season, but definitely a, a regression coming off the rookie season. We expect this step forward and he kind of just stayed the same and maybe even taken a step back. But now you look at his numbers, he's batting 280 on the season with over 800 OPS. He's going to have nearly 30 home runs and like 40 stolen bases. And he's going to end up having an incredible season, maybe even play his way into getting some MVP votes. So what the Mariners are doing is absolutely incredible. And then for the Rangers, they hit this major wall as we've entered the month of August. Eight game losing streak. Eight game losing, losing streak. streak. We just talked about the Mariners 9-1 in their last 10. The Rangers are 1-9 in their last 10 flip. And it's weird because the trade deadline has been good for the Rangers. Max Scherzer has a 2-6 ERA post, uh, you know, during his time with Texas. Jordan Montgomery, I saw him firsthand against the D-backs this past week. He was phenomenal over the course of eight innings or whatever. So it's like the Rangers post deadline moves have worked. The, the rotation has been bolstered up, but they've hidden this wall. The offense has not been as good. Josh Young has also gotten hurt, which has, uh, you know, hurt the Rangers of course and then the Astros have just kind of lurked their way this whole time they haven't really gone too hot but they also haven't fallen back either they've just kind of been lurking and they're also the team that I want to watch out for because as hot as the Mariners have been as cold as the Rangers have been I don't want to overlook the Astros the team lurking in that AL West I would say later in the show we talked to Ty Dane Gonzalez of Locked On Mariners who talked about exactly that about the fact Mm -hmm. that there is no front runner in the American League right now. It's not the Twins. It's not the Rangers. The injury to Bautista means it's not really the Orioles anymore because that's their great strength. Yeah. And it makes the Astros very dangerous because they've been there and they've also done that. And so if there's any team that could turn that switch on the way that some other teams have done recently, we talk about that later. So that's a little little preview for later in the show. But the AL West has just put the the tightness of this AL West, there is a scenario where the Rangers and the Astros may not make it out of the wild card series. And in a way, this kind of reminds me of in 2014, around the All-Star break, the A's had the best record in the American League and their arch rival in the postseason were the Tigers, who had eliminated the A's the previous two seasons. And both teams went into the all-star, went into the trade deadline, making massive moves. The A's traded Cespedes for John Lester, and they also traded for Jeff Smarza. They brought in two all-star starters. The Tigers brought in David Price, and it really just felt like those teams were building up for a postseason showdown in 2014. And what happened? Both teams were a bust the second half of the season. The A's lost a thrilling wildcard game to the 
Kansas City Royals. The Tigers got swept by Baltimore. So the two teams that looked like they were getting ready for an ALCS showdown combined for zero postseason wins and were totally forgotten they were even in the postseason by the time the World Series kicked around. When we went into the trade deadline this year, it looked like it was going to be a rootin' tootin' Texas showdown with the yeah. Rangers picking up Max Scherzer and picking up Montgomery. The Astros picked up Verlander, and it's like, oh, my God. And compared to the wild card teams and the AL East teams, oh, my God, it's going to be a Texas shootout. Boom, 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 boom. And now we look up, and it's the 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 – the bullpen for the Rangers has been an absolute catastrophe. And do you know what the uh, Mariners record is in August? They're 19 and five and they were 17 and nine in July. Since the beginning of July, no one's been better in the AL than the Seattle Mariners. And they've pitched there. And the two Texas teams, which looked like they were the, 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 the favorites, have fallen flat on their face. Yeah, fun question for you, because as it currently stands, I think if you had to pick an American League division to represent the conference, I think I'm picking the AL West to send one of their yeah. teams to the World Series over, even though the Tampa Bay Rays and Baltimore Orioles have been pacing in terms of wins over like every other team in the American League. I don't feel, especially with that injury to the bullpen, the Rays always feel like a regular season team. I think I like the three teams in the AL West over any other team in the other divisions we, to represent the American Well, League. you and Ty Dan Gonzalez are in perfect sync. We talk about that a lot. Oh, really? That's, okay. a nice, that's a nice uh, nice horizontal tease. Is that a horizontal or vertical tease? Either way, it's a tease for later on this episode where we do break down why the AL West is the team to beat. Yeah, but let me first tell our listeners about this little money app that I use for my finances called Dave because finances can be so intimidating. That's why you need Dave. Dave can make managing your money so much easier with an interest-free extra cash advance, fee-free gold tracking, and easy-to-way finds to find a side hustle to make more money. Dave is the banking app that's leveling the financial playing field. When you download Dave, you can get up to $500 and in five minutes or less. No credit check, no late fees. It's part of Dave's extra cash account. Advance the money you need with no interest and then settle up later. You can even build credit when you settle up on time. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to make their finances easier. Download Dave today at dave.com slash MLB. That's dave.com slash MLB. You can get up to $500 in five minutes or less. No credit check, no late fees. Download the Dave app now or go to dave.com slash MLB for terms and conditions. Go to dave.com slash legal eligibility criteria and instant transfer fees apply. Banking services provided by Evolve, member FDIC. Um, let me just uh, bring up a fact. Uh, I'm not quite sure how a lot of the schedule is going uh, and how it's unfolding, but uh I think there's a there's a glitch in the schedule because apparently the Reds and the Diamondbacks are going to play each other every day for the rest of the season. Has it not mm-hmm. seemed like that this this series between these two teams has been going on for the last month and a half? It's been yeah. uh, it's it's been a wild wild series and and a great series. Mm-hmm. Like the Thursday game was the one where a base running blunder by Cattell Marte looked like it was going to cost the Diamondbacks the game when he didn't score on that Peterson hit, but then mm-hmm. Carroll wound up hitting the home run to give them the lead. Then another wild slug fest happened on Friday where it looked like the D-backs had it in hand until the Reds hit a ninth inning grand slam to make everyone sweat a little bit. Yeah. D-backs won that one up 2-0 in the series. And then uh, yesterday, and another thriller where the each team scored the, the 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 red scored two in the ninth each team had a three run rally and the reds wound up holding on in the 11th and then today uh in a game that went final not too long ago uh the reds took a 2-1 lead into the 8th and um who I who I'm getting to was the was it Alec Thomas who got the game winning hit on today i know thomas wow. made an amazing catch on one of the games against the Reds, but like, but in, in the end, it was five two Diamondbacks over the Cincinnati Reds, and uh, was it that long ago that the Diamondbacks run 
were absolutely spiraling and sputtering and everything. And now here they are. They are the third wild card team, and they've won eight of their last 10 games. Yeah. Uh, it's crazy because the D-backs were one of the worst teams in Major League Baseball from about mid-June to mid-August. It was a two-month mm-hmm. span where the D-backs had uh, probably the worst record in Major Leagues during that time. And if you look at the D-backs during this 10-game stretch, like you just mentioned, they beat the Texas Rangers. They just took three out of four against the Cincinnati Reds. And what they're doing, because this is something that they were so good in the first half, they're making comebacks late in these games. The D-backs were called the answer backs for so long of the season because the D-backs were the best team in Major League Baseball in terms of coming back after the fifth inning or whatever. When this D-backs team was down early, they always came back late for a victory. And that's not something we really, really saw during that two-month stretch where they just kind of hit this slump of the season. Their bullpen was bad. Their rotation was bad. Their offense was struggling. But now their offense is starting to heat up again. Their rotation against the Cincinnati Red team was really good. Merrill Kelly was nasty. Fott was good. We saw Slade today be really good. The issue is still for the D-backs is that bullpen. Paul Seawald has been really good for the Mariners. Uh, I mean, for the good. Has been really good for the D-backs from the Mariners. He seems to really solidify that closer role. But outside of him and Kevin Ginkle and Kyle Nelson, you basically have three guys that you trust in the bullpen. Then everyone else is a wild card. So you kind of need your rotation members to go six, seven innings deep to really limit the amount of relievers you use in a ball game. But the D-backs are at least finally back on track. They need to win this series against the Cincinnati Reds, who own the tiebreaker over the D-backs. And you look at the D-backs schedule coming up, you're going to face the Cubs two more times the rest of the <laughs> way. The D-backs have a very tough schedule talking with um Bryce Patrick of Lockdown Rangers last week the D-backs kind of decide the fate of the AOS because they just played the Rangers recently their last series uh on the year is against the Houston Astros so the D-backs and the AOS are kind of tied for the rest of the season and it's just nice to finally see the D-backs get back to winning because at one point they were like three and a half games back out of the wild card race I'm just finally happy to see them back in the mix and starting to win games again and I also think they're because of all the teams that are equipped for a the the best of three wild card series. There's few that's better equipped than Arizona is mm-hmm. because you can throw Galen and you can throw Kelly one two. You know you're going to win one of those two games. You know, a knock on glass should, for, yeah. the, for the <laughs> Diamondbacks. Um, I when you take a look at you know just I mean I know you you don't try to make matchups. You don't try to say oh, I hope we get this team instead of that. But as of right now, Diamondbacks would play Milwaukee. That's yeah. an interesting series because both of them have good starting pitching right at the top. You'd probably have Galen versus uh, um, Burns. Corbin Burns yeah. in game one. I mean, that's that's as good a matchup as you're going to see in game one of a playoff series. Um, I think that'd be an interesting series, I think, because both of their strengths kind of match each other. Uh, but I would lean a little more. That, I mean, that's definitely a series – that Arizona could win, but Arizona could win against Philadelphia. Arizona yeah. could win against Chicago. And, you know, we've seen that they can win against Cincinnati and the other teams that are kind of on right now on the outside looking in are San Francisco and Miami. As of now, granted, it's a best of three series and anything can happen in a best of three series. We saw the freaking A's swept the Rays earlier this year, but with that in mind, when you have two good pitchers coming out of the gate, um, it's going to, you know, look at it, it's whoever it, it'd be a stunner if it's not Atlanta or Los Angeles coming out of the NL going into the World Series. But in order to get to that point, getting through that first series, I think Arizona is in great shape, especially the way they've been playing. Yeah, because I think the D-backs can match up with any team that they could face in the wild card round. The Phillies, I mean, Aaron Nola hasn't been that great this year. You got to worry about Zach Wheeler. Maybe yeah, Wheel, Wheeler's, Wheeler's good. good. Wheeler's very good. Yeah, and, yeah, Wheeler's good. But the D-backs front line can match up with that front line. Of course, Bryce Harper's a postseason hero, but it's not like that lineup has been crushing it all year. Schwarber's, you know, he's in home runs, but he's batting like 180. Trey Turner's has had a down season as well. You got the Marlins out there, great rotation, but you're not scared of that offense. No. You look at the Cincinnati Reds, you feel like they're pretty young. You're not really they're they're a little too raw. You're not scared of that rotation either. The Cubs, I think, are interesting, but Strowman's kind of hurt. Do you really trust the Justin C on the big series? You know, Bellinger's gonna have to kind of carry that offense. So I think the D-backs could be any wild card matchup. I think it's really when you look past the wild card round to that divisional round, that's when it's like, okay, now a big test is coming. Of course, the D-backs could lose in the wild card round, but to beat a Dodgers or Braves in a series, I think that really means something. That would really cement that the D-backs are here and they would really be in play for a potential World Series run. 
All right. I mean, I'll just say if anyone other than Atlanta or Los Angeles comes out of the National League, I'll be stunned. Especially, the I mean, way I, been I, especially would you be surprised playing. if if those two teams are not like the two just teams in the uh, NLCS? I mean, I'll have to see how the break it uh, the bracket shakes up. But well, yeah, are, I'd be kind of surprised if they're not, you know, the two teams in the championship. Well, well, yeah, I think they're going to be. I think the Braves. Well, right now, the Braves and the Dodgers are just they're like eleven games ahead of Milwaukee. Yeah. So they the, the only way they could play each other is in the NLCS, and. Um, and they're both on pace to win like a hundred games and be the best team. I mean, last year they were the two best teams as well, along with the Mets and the Mets lost in the, the wild card series. And then we saw that Philly upset the, uh, Philly upset the Braves and the goose showed up and the Padres upset Los Angeles. I thought those, I think that's a little bit of a fluke that that both happened. I mean, I think that Do- we've seen how the Dodgers are playing and we're talking a little bit in the third segment about the fact that the NL MVP race is really getting interesting with some big players from Atlanta and from LA. Uh, and I think it's safe to say that the NL MVP is going to come from one of those two teams, but you know, look at for the deep, for all the wild card teams, they all have talent. Right now, the wild card teams, the wild card series team would be Milwaukee as a division winner, Philadelphia, Chicago, and Arizona, and Cincinnati, San Francisco, and Miami are on the outside looking in. Uh, the the absolute nosedive of the Padres show that any hope that they might have had of entering back in this race is gone. They're about to be leapfrogged by the Nationals and yeah. the Mets, two teams that traded away. So, um. You well, that's just fun what? overall, just because looking at the standings today and seeing that the Nationals are tied with the Padres, I'm like, that's the team that, you know, blew up, you know, trading away their superstar to the Padres <laughs> and got back all these pieces. And now they're in the same position still a year later. And, and good for the Nationals for re-upping Rizzo, their general manager, and Dave Martinez. Instead mm-hmm. of just saying, well, we stink and let's just clean house. They said, wait a minute. This is the general manager who built the team that went won a ton of divisions in the 2010s and wound up winning the World Series in 2019. And they went through a whole bunch of managers. Remember, they had, they had Mar- Dave Martinez, they had Matt Williams, they had Dusty. Mm-hmm. But they won with Dave Martinez. And they said, hey, look at Dave. You, you know, We traded everything that wasn't nailed down last year or two years ago. And now there's the team bears very little resemblance to the team that won the World Series in 2019. And yet... They've been playing very good baseball, and there's a ton of young talent on that team. And they're saying, hey, we trust you to be the one to manage this good young talent. So I, I, I like the fact that the Nationals said, all right, we're, we're, here will be our shepherd. And there's a, there's, they're showing some faith in the team. And I bet the Nats are going to be better. I mean, look, at they've been playing excellent baseball. That I don't think they're going to hit 500, but I thought they were going to be a 100-loss team. And they're probably not even going to lose 90. Yeah. And so also, that, that's, a good, that's know, a good step for them. I don't know if you can answer this, but do you know if a player retires, does that money come off the books? Because, I mean, with Steven Strasburg now retiring from Major League Baseball, I mean, that's $35 million a year. That's going to be coming off the books. For the I National wonder League. how much of that, because he's also been injured, how much of that they can mm-hmm. recoup in insurance as well. Um, I don't know the answer to that. And I won't by the end of today, because when you and I are done recording with this, I'm going to lay down and I won't be looking up the intricacies of finance regarding it and this sounds like we're entering into a plug for dave now let me tell you guys about this app that i use today i guess at the time you guys listening to this podcast yesterday because i just drafted my dynasty fantasy team on this app it's called the sleeper app and no app is greater for both the fantasy season and daily fantasy because for dynasty football it's great i could do my draft on there got the rookie draft it keeps the taxi squad players it keeps my players from year to year archived on the app it's absolutely fantastic and then also for daily fantasy you can win more money on the sleeper app yes you can you just got pick a player like Corbin Carroll and Shohei Otani to hit a home run you pick a few stat categories and then bang boom if those picks hit you can win up to a hundred times payout yes you can big money on the sleeper app so please 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 use promo code locked on you'll get up to a hundred dollar match on your first deposit terms and conditions apply see sleepers terms of use for details currently operational in over 30 states check out sleeper today 
Or but this, by I, the way, I I I've been saying this. I've been saying this for a while. I mean, especially since we've expanded the playoffs, I think that you need to move the season. I'm willing to sacrifice uh, September regular season baseball um, because the whole idea of 162 game season, the playoffs are a crapshoot, but it's this big long gauntlet, and only a handful of teams get in there. But if we're expanding the playoffs, and I think the expansion of the playoffs is great. Uh, the season should end on Labor Day. We should have like one more week left of the season, yeah. and then you know the 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 fan bases that are still super into it, there are will be the teams that are in the playoffs, and the teams that are not. Yeah, you know, we're going to be fighting. I'm going to a game in Oakland in the middle of September. Uh, I, I have a feeling I might be alone. You know, I mean, good seats are available. I might yeah. be the only person there. And Spread you think out. about those, those teams. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be I'm in a different seat every pitch. But the, uh, the fact of the matter is, is that for teams that are out of it, September, when every kid is back in school and everything is like our lives have gone back, you know, people stop thinking about baseball after Labor Day. <laughs> and unless unless your team is still in it, but for most no. of baseball, but for, you know, try striding up baseball conversations with people when the football season starts. It's it's an uphill battle. I mean, th- this should be the stretch run. If we're going to have the expanded playoffs, then September you have the playoffs and the World Series the first week of October, instead of it being in November. And it's still baseball weather out. You know, it's not like a series. Imagine if the World Series is, I said this before, but a couple of years ago, uh, both the Rockies and the Twins were wildcard teams. Now, they both got eliminated early, but could you imagine that meant on the table was a possibility of the World Series being played in Minneapolis and Denver in late October, early November? Yeah. I mean, no. And w- watch these the the stars of a Fox show shiver in the outdoor stadium there. I mean, I, I if expanded playoffs mean let's sh- let's shrink the regular season. Yeah, I've made this argument before on my podcast because, like, I watched the D backs in 2021 when they won 52 games. So it's like by the time mid June hits, like your season's over. And so now it's like I'm watching three months of meaningless baseball. It's like the season was a little bit shorter. You raise the stakes from game to game, from week to week. And it's like teams will mm-hmm. be in the playoff race a little bit longer. And it's like I don't need three months of dead time. And also, I just never understood the ki- the, the Tim Kirchin argument 162 is the perfect formula for knowing how good a team is, the perfect sample size, because if that's true. Why do you still need the game 163 when two teams are tied? Or it's like, why does the 150, the 115 win team lose to the wild card team in the, in the first round of the playoffs? Like things wouldn't happen like that if this was the perfect formula. So it was never really, I under I only understand keeping the season the length it is for historical purposes, for stats and stuff like that. And for most of the, most of baseball history, the season was 154 games. It didn't expand to 162 until the early 60s. One in fact, that was the big controversy about Roger Maris passing Babe Ruth's record was that Babe Ruth did 154 and Roger Maris did 162 and says, ah, does it should account? So I'm sure they, they, you know, I'm sorry. This is, I, we still got a good shot at it. If 162 game gauntlet is great. If it was perfect, I think when there were only four playoff teams, because you, you really had with the exception of every once in a while, like an 87 twins or a 73, Mets would get through, but most of the time it was in order to be one of those four teams, you have to be great. And there were cases of teams that won a hundred games missing the playoffs because you know, we're only taking, we're only taking the division winners. And, and so therefore the, the random gauntlet of the postseason was there. And, you know, quite frankly, it, 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 it felt just because if a random team upset another team, like the 93 Phillies upset the Braves, who won 104 games that year. But you know what? They all went through 162-game gauntlet. Mm-hmm. But now, if we're going to expand it, and again, I can't make this clearer. I like the expanded playoffs. I think they're good for baseball. And I think you're hard-pressed to find someone who enjoys baseball more than me, not just on this network, but anywhere on the planet Earth that you're walking. OK, I'm not saying I'm the biggest baseball fan, but I'm one of them. And I'm saying make it so the season ends and ends a week from today. You would have this big, huge, long tournament taking over September. 
Think about this. This will be down the stretch in August. The season ends on Labor Day. Okay. Then you start the playoffs. And by the time the expanded playoffs are over, it'll be the first week of, of October that you have the World Series being played. And then the season wraps up. And you're not you're not having the embarrassment of like of of like, oh, you know, we're trying to go up against the football or anything like that. You're not. You're not. Because yeah. I do like it when you get that cross that that four sport cross section when it's like baseball, oh, it's football, hockey and basketball all fall on the same day. But it's like also it's the baseball playoffs and now it's competing with that football and the NBA and the hockey yeah. season. So it's like let's just end a little bit earlier because I do love the expanded postseason. Like you said, I used to think. I used to, you know, pre the NBA expand their playoffs with the playing tournament. I was like, why are we going to water down sports with the expanded postseason football, basketball and baseball? But now it's like before when you only had the four teams making it, you had to be great. But now it's like more teams are willing to commit in the offseason because now it's like I don't have to be great. It's not championship or bust. I could just be good. Just be stuck in purgatory. Just be stuck in the middle. Make the postseason. Get some of that extra playoff revenue. So now it's like more teams think they're in it and more teams kind of make more rash decisions, maybe more irrational decisions at the the deadline and <laughs> like not trading point. Otani. Yeah, if, they, exactly. if, if there wasn't a third wild card team, there would be. I mean, look at. I think it was a mistake that they didn't trade Otani. Or I mean, again, once again, it was it was a mistake to either not they had to either resign him or trade him, and they did neither, uh, which was stupid. But you saw teams like even the Padres made a few moves, like going like we're not going to trade Soto. Now we're going to try to go for it. You know, and, yeah, and it was not? Uh, why not? And you know, you do get instances where a team you know, goes on a great run like Atlanta did in 2021, like Washington in 2019, like Philadelphia did when they at least got to the World Series last year. So, you know, it 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 create it creates memories, it creates entertainment. Um and and by the way, for all the people who are super precious about who's in the 700 home run club, who's in the 600 home run club. It's gonna be a hell of a lot harder yeah. to get into the 600 home run club if we're playing a hundred and 30 games. I and yeah. you would I think you'd have fewer injuries and I think you would also you know it'd be interesting to see like what's the attendance going to be for these ball games for teams that are out of it on a weekday on Thursday in September. You know, there's going to mm-hmm. be a bunch of times where it's like it's like the vendors walking up and down empty aisles. Yeah, I think we saw last year too like uh with the Philadelphia Phillies and a team like the Lakers like the expanded postseason really helps for these teams that maybe they were thrown together in the offseason. They need time to gel to build up the chemistry. A team like the Phillies that started really slow last year and then, you know, coalesced in the second half of the season. Or a team like the Lakers last season, who their two best players were hurt the whole year, but you had that playing tournament to really help you get into the postseason. And all of a sudden, your team goes on a run. So sometimes this expanded postseason can really help those premier teams that might have dealt with injuries or dealt with lack of chemistry in the first half. And it's really exciting when you can still see those teams because in the past, like, you would have never Known a team like the Phillies were as good as they were last season. No. They would have never even made it to the dance. We would have never got that moment from Bryce Harper where he finally takes the world by storm and he, and his potentials realized the 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 reason he was the cover of you know Sports Illustrated and the reason why he was the number one overall pick. We never get that arc from a Bryce Harper, and it would have been crazy too if we never got that. If we never lived in a world where Bryce Harper took over Major League Baseball. When he hit that home run in the game five of the NLCS that put the Phillies ahead and the place was just absolutely, the stadium was absolutely trembling with that home run. When you think about the rule of seven, when you think about if you're, which is you don't follow a team until you're around seven years old or so. The last time the Phillies were good was 2011. Mm -hmm. So here we are. It's like, it was 11 years later. So if you're 17 years old or whatever, or younger, you don't remember the the Cole Hamels, Ryan Howard, Chase Sutley, Jimmy Rollins years. Mm-hmm. That might as well have been Grover Cleveland Alexander. It might as well have been old black and white clips in the Ken Burns film. Now you have a memory. Now you have a thing. You have your guy. You, that you have your moment. And that moment would not have happened if the you know if you didn't have that for the for a Phillies fan. And so I look at. Is it watered down? Maybe. But also, I like seeing stars in it. By the way, if there's ever an indictment for the Angels, is that since the arrival of Mike Trout, they've expanded the playoffs to a wild card game 
and another wild card team, and they still have only made the postseason once in his entire uh, 12 seasons that he's been in Anaheim. But I digress. Yeah, I think the other argument that you can use for expanded postseason, like all sports, is what you just said with the talent level. I think in all sports, we're just in a really good place where every team has a star or two, whether it's basketball, football, baseball, like everyone can at least point to someone that's like, okay, that's a franchise player that could build around. And, you know, in the past, it might not have been like that. You know, you look at the 90s in in the NBA and it could have been like watered down with some of those teams, with especially when we get expansion. Also, Major League Baseball, like all that stuff kind of waters down teams. But right now you look at every Major League team is like calling up a top prospect, calling up a top rookie. Every dude is coming in, throwing 100 miles an hour. Got guys like Corbin Carroll and Ella De La Cruz who are like 30-30 potential guys. So it's like, I think baseball and all sports are just in a really good place with talent. So you can expand postseason because you know you're going to see a young budding star no matter what team gets in.